Go ahead and mash it. Hallelujah. Did it turn red? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, good evening, everyone. Hallelujah. We want to welcome you tonight to our evening service. Amen. Also, we want to welcome everyone who is watching this broadcast. We also want to welcome you tonight to our evening service. And we pray that this service tonight will be a blessing to each of us in Jesus name amen well let's we open up in prayer in the name of Jesus Heavenly Father we thank you so much we thank you for who you are we thank you Lord God for everything you continue to do in each of our lives we thank you Lord God that your presence is here your anointing in this place we thank you, Lord God, that you give us an opportunity, Lord God, to come before you and worship you and praise you and glorify your name. And we thank you, Lord God, that you choose us as your children, Lord. And Father, we ask you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, speak through our man of God, Pastor Larry, tonight. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, that we have a ears to hear and a heart to receive spiritual hearing and part to receive let impartation into our spirit oh god will be impart your word your revelation in the name of jesus and we welcome you holy spirit in this place have your way tonight in each of our lives and those who is here and those who is watching this broadcast have your way holy spirit in jesus mighty name Amen and amen. Well, you may have a seat in the presence of the Lord. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I want to say thank you for um, those who is watching this broadcast and those who is contacting us through uh, our online ministry, through the, uh, our website, um, Larry Bergen's Ministries, uh, dot com. We thank you for some of you uh, sharing your testimonies. We are so appreciate and rejoicing with you what God is doing in your life. Some of you share with us how God touched your body. We know that Jesus Christ is the healer and he is um, healing his people in the name of Jesus because this is the children's bread. This is, belongs to you. And um, many of you share your testimony with us, what God did for you, even as through online, but it's no distance in the spirit. So we know God is, um, you know, is the spirit and he can touch even through the um, internet in Jesus name. Now, those who wants to submit some prayer requests, you're also welcome to do so. We do pay, uh, pray for our uh, partners and every supporter, um, supporters of the ministry. We love you very much. We pray for you. But we do want to know if you have some prayer requests that we will not just generally pray for you, which is we do, but when you submit your specific prayer request, we specifically pray for that need. And we know that God hears our prayer, and when we pray in agreement with you, we believe for the supernatural breakthrough in your life, and that situation will be resolved according to God's will and His purpose. So continue to share your uh, prayer request, submit your prayer request through our website. Amen. And don't forget again to share your testimonies hallelujah because we overcome satan through the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony how many of you have a testimonies amen right so when we share our testimonies what how god deliver you in your life that experience that testimony, that experience, because the testimony, it's your experience, what God has done in your life. And when you have this experience, your faith arise. So now, saying all of this, I just wanted to remind you not to look of your circumstances, okay? Because what the enemy wants you to do, to look at your circumstances. 
right? So we know that a battle is in the mind. Different thoughts or pictures of circumstances. But see, God is above all of these circumstances. His power and His anointing can wipe this out in Jesus' name. And we see a lot of times even the testimonies that we receive. Um, if any of you familiar with uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, many of you know what is this, but it's uh, someone who is experienced some kind of very traumatic event in your life. And many of, maybe some of you been in a, in a war or maybe served um, in the military or um, you know, in a police or in some kind of special um, places, special forces or whatever it is, or maybe um, some trauma you experience in domestic trauma, you know, in childhood trauma. So even from the childhood. So that's also could be a considered uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. All, all when it's this picture continually like a hunting you, hunting you in the dreams and, and some, um, some even uh, constantly, you know, you thinking about this, it's a, like a trauma. When trauma is a cure in person's life, it's also what happened is, from the natural perspective, it's traumatized the brain. So it's a, some parts of the brain is the trauma, and, or sometimes doctor says the damage of the brain, uh, brain damage, um, that's what happened. Well now, how many of us know that Jesus is the healer, amen? amen. So, and the reason I share that part with you, how is the post-traumatic stress disorder, what it does, because God who we serve, he delivered us from all of this. So when you continually seek in the Lord, follow him, I'm not saying some of these things might not gonna hunt you down because some of this trauma is real, right? You experience that. And you 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 dealing with that, and um, but see when we call up in the name of the Lord, when you're expecting supernatural healing, and to start to believe that God who you serve, He is not just a, a saver, but He is also a healer. He is not just a healer of the back or of the leg, or of the liver. Jesus Christ, who we serve, he is also a healer of the post-traumatic stress disorder. He is also can heal your brain. Do you hear me? Yeah. He is also can heal your brain. That trauma affected what happened in your brain that traumatic episode that happened to you in a childhood or maybe you were in adulthood or maybe you was a, in a military or in a war whatever that trauma came from it's really doesn't matter but the matter is that God who saved you he also wants to release that healing into your body, into your heart, into your mind. So the scripture is saying to us, when you know the truth, the truth will set you free. Now, what is it I'm relating to? The truth that Jesus who you follow, he wants to heal you. So when you receive that understanding into your spirit, he doesn't want you to suffer and be hurt and to be hunting by these certain memories or whatever 
the happen but God wants to heal you he wants to restore you he wants you to be whole that's when you go through that traumatic episode right through that experience you're going through hear what I'm saying you're going through you don't need to stop there so now I will listen that truth understand for you because when you know the truth the truth will set you free God who you follow for Jesus Christ wants to bring the healing and restoration in your whole body in your mind in your brain in your inner man he wants to restore whatever the enemy did for evil in your life God wants to bring the restoration he wants to erase all that bad memory he wants to raise erase that all of this bad situation from your mind hallelujah or oh, grief maybe someone you lost in your life and you're still grieving you're still grieving and still hurting some people even turn against God because they didn't understand they say well in the enemy put in their minds to say well how come God you took that person from me well see some things secret things is belongs to to the Lord sometimes we don't understand the whole picture one that's why this person is gone a lot of times that we know that we are have the spiritual warfare and as we know in the natural when people go to the war like a soldiers right and we know some of the soldiers will not come back because they gave their life right because they are soldiers now in the spiritual realm we also as the people of God we have to understand that we also have the spiritual warfare and the enemy doesn't want you to be happy so he brings certain situations in your life to bring the destruction, disturb you, or to bring the damage into your brain, or to bring the hurt for your loved ones. He wants to do that because he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. This is his job, this is his nature. That is not God that wants to hurt you or wants to steal the loved one. It's because of the spiritual warfare. And some things we don't understand, but we know one thing, God, who we serve, He is a loving Father. He is a loving Father. He loves His people because of God so much to love the world that He gave His only and begotten Son. He loved, hear that, God so much to love the world. See. God loves us. He loves the people. He loves the people. He loves you. He loves me. He loves us. He doesn't want to hurt you. He wants to restore you. He wants you to be walking on your potential. That you will be able to step into the purpose that God has for you. And he continued to have this. Even you step aside from your purpose. God wants to restore you. He is not mad at you. He wants to restore you. He wants to heal your broken heart. He wants to restore your heart. He wants to restore your mind. He wants to heal your mind. Hallelujah. So, Father, I lift unto you, Lord God, your people, in the name of Jesus, everyone who is here tonight. And I also, Lord God, lift unto you, Lord God, every person who is watching this broadcast. I ask you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that you look up to up in your people, Lord God, with the eyes of mercy and grace and, and compassion, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. That let your love and compassion will be released right now in this place in such a way, Lord God, that your people are able to receive 
in the name of Jesus. Let the healing power of the Lord Jesus Christ will manifest in a healing, will manifest in this place tonight. In the name of Jesus and those who is watching this broadcast, just get ready to receive. I break every obstacle, anything but try to block or stop to people to receive that. What God, what you have for them, we break it in Jesus' name. And Father, we release the, the flow of the healing power of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus. You are the, our Savior. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're also our healer. Lord Jesus, we call up in your name and we thank you, Lord Jesus, for the inner healing will manifest here tonight. Lord, I thank you, Lord God, that you heal the people's minds and the, the brains. Supernatural restoration of any brain damage in the name of Jesus for the any substance use or trauma. Father, we thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Every brain damage be restored right now in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We bind every sickness, every disease, every infirmity. Anything that is not of God, we bind, we lose it, we break it off right now in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord God for your awesome presence in this place. In Jesus' name. And Father, as Pastor Larry come, use him tonight as your vessel, O oh God, on behalf of your people. Let your word as go forward. Your word will not return void. Your word will manifest in each of our lives. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, so get ready to receive tonight what God has for you. In Jesus' name, amen. come to you now in the gracious and mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for this time you have given us to declare your word. And as we come, Father, we come expecting to hear from you, to hear from heaven. And we expecting to not just be hearers of the word, but to be doers of the word. That as we hear it, we'll be able to apply it to our lives. And as we apply it to our life, we will see the results that we are uh, that we should see. And Father, we thank you and we bless you and we give you all the glory now in advance in Jesus' name. Now, Father, anoint every ear to hear, prepare your heart to receive, make my tongue as of a pen of a red writer to write your word upon the heart for the mind of your people that they will know the truth and that the truth shall make them free. And Father, we covenant with you that we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise in the glorious and mighty majestic name of Jesus. And all the agree that say it, amen and amen. Thank you for your amen today. Amen. Glory to God. We started on a lesson on last Sunday. Amen. How many remember the title of the message on last Sunday? Did y'all write it down? Amen. The first one can give it to me. The word of God is alive in you. The word of God is alive in you. By faith. 
by faith. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, I don't have nothing to give you. <laughs> <laughs> amen. Glory to God. Amen. But the word of God is alive in you through faith. That's right. That is what we talked about on last time. Amen. And that brought us that brought us into an area of what we begin to talk about. Huh? It's about finances. That's right. Sure did. And so today, I'm going to hit along that line a little bit. I don't, I, I'm not going to do much along that line today because I still, I'm still preparing myself along that line. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you what I already know. Amen. What I already know. Because I believe that God is concerned about that area of our lives also. Amen. Yeah. Glory to God. And that's why it's so important for us to understand what God is saying to us in this area. Because when we when we when we start talking about this subject, actually, it's a very serious topic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you start dealing with when you start talking about about this about money, it's a very serious topic because people get kind of uh, frickle when you go to talking about money. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. But I want you to know that God is not uh, moved by situations or circumstances. Mm -hmm. Amen. God is only moved by what his word says. And his word says that he is a deliverer. He is our healer. He is our help in the time of need. Amen. How many of you know that God is not El Chipo? God is El Shaddai. Amen. Yes. Amen. The God of more than enough. He's a God of more than enough. He has abundant supply to supply every need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. Well, well Pastor, I don't, understand. I don't understand. Can you show me that in the word? Yes, I can. Turn to Philippians 4.19. Amen. Philippians 4.19. Amen. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna share a little bit tonight. I don't know how much we're gonna share along that line, but we're gonna share a little bit. I think we can set the found set a foundation. Amen. I believe we can do that much tonight. Actually, because we started on it, we started uh, working on this a little bit on last Sunday night. Amen. And I like these nights because see these these nights. Uh, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not uh, bound to one topic. I can go with the flow of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Philippians four nineteen. Now Hebrew. They're not in Hebrew. Not yet. Huh? Before Hebrew. Before you started. Y'all trying to use my. <laughs> before Ephesians. Uh-huh. It started growing. No, it's not before Ephesians. It's after Ephesians. Well, no, the other Ephesians. <laughs> the other Ephesians, huh? Uh, testimony. Okay, okay. Oh, Philippians 4, 19. Are you there? Yes. Now, notice what he said. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. If God supply all your need, that now notice, let's back it up a little bit further now. Let's back it up a little bit further because you see, we need to understand, we need to put it in the full content so that we can see what God is actually saying to us, amen? But I rejoice in the Lord greatly, verse number 10. Now that at the least your care of me had flourished again, wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. See, he said you all so careful, but you lack opportunity. What is he talking about when he's saying you lack opportunity? He's referring to uh, an opportunity to, to be a blessing. An opportunity to to, to, uh, to to establish an outflow. Amen. An opportunity to be uh, a, a, a source. Amen. Because you can be a source or you can be Mm. You can be a source. Well, receiver, receiver is good, but I'm looking for something up opposite than a source. A taker, huh? A taker. A taker. You yeah. Or you, take. you can be a source, or you can be a taker. A leech. Huh? Or a leech. That's a good one too. A leech. Amen. Because see, 
if you are a, if you, because when you, when, when you know that when God has given you the opportunity and you, and you uh, take advantage of that opportunity, you be, you, you be, you become a part of that solution of what God is trying to accomplish. See, you can be a blessing or you can be a hindrance. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So when I look when I look at this, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to bring it to to you in a in, in in the content as it is given, so that you can understand what God is saying. Because sometimes when we talk about this, when we talk about uh, uh, giving, when we talk about receiving, when we talk about money, uh, people kind of get uh, kind of uh, 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 they kind of shut down on you. Amen. So I don't want I don't want you to shut down on me. Amen. I want y'all to have, keep an open heart, open mind. Because God wants to strengthen you. God wants to bless you. God wants to encourage you. I'm telling you, let me tell you something. God wants to raise your level of financial influence in the earth. And it can happen. But you got a part to play in that. Amen. And, and, and you might say, well, Pastor, I don't think that I can be, I don't think, because I don't have nothing. You know what? When I first started this, I didn't have nothing either. But I started doing what I could. Amen. I started doing what I could. I started giving when I didn't have nothing to give. I started giving. And then when I went home, I didn't have nothing in my pocket sometimes. But, uh, but a few days later, glory to God, somebody would always come by with a, hey, hey what are you doing? Oh, I ain't doing nothing. You want to ride with me? Oh, yeah, I'll go ride with you. Next thing you know, uh, what? I need you to help me to do this right here. And all of a sudden, I'm helping, and now I got some money. I got some money. <laughs> Where did it come from? By being a blessing. By being a blessing. Amen. God gave me opportunity. Amen. By being a blessing, God gave me opportunity. Amen. So notice what he said now. He said he lacked opportunity. He lacked opportunity. Verse, uh, verse number 10. But number verse 11 said, not not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I'm in, whatsoever state I am, therewith to be what? Content. 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 Amen. I know both how to be a base and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry. Both to abound and to suffer need. I can do what? All things through Christ who strengthens me. Verse number 14 said, Notwithstanding, notwithstanding ye have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction. See, Paul is talking because, see, Paul, he had a, he had a need, man, and the people, they met the need. Notice what he goes on to say here. And for living full, and for living full, uh, 15 now. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel when I departed from Macedonia, no church did what? Communicated with me as concerning what? Giving, Giving and, receiving. and receiving. And then he, then he made it very plain to him. He said, but you only. But you only. Amen. Then no one said right here, verse number 16. For even in Thessalonica, ye sent once and again unto my necessity. Not because I desire a gift, but I desire that I desire fruit that may what? Abound to your account. How did the fruit abound to their account? When they honored the man of God that brought them the word of God. And that caused them, that caused them to experience the fruit of the word. Amen. That was released. Now, now, now notice what he said, right? What we had that verse number, verse number 18 said, But I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epiditus the things which were sent from you and adore of a sweet smell. Sacrifice. A sacrifice, acceptable, well pleasing to God. to God. That's right, to God. And then he said, But my God, 
because you because you did all that, he said, but my God whoo, shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory. Amen. According to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. See, God knows exactly how to bring you to a place where you can experience his goodness. Amen. His goodness. God, God will meet, God will meet your need according to his riches, according to his unlimited resources. See, God is not limited in resources. God is, God has the, the, enough resources to, to bring you to a place. I'm telling you, God spoke something seriously over my life in the last, you know, just uh, yesterday I was, I, I received a, a prophetic word from the Lord. Amen. And the Lord said that he bring me into a, a new realm of receiving, a new realm of blessing, a new realm of prayer and answer to prayer. And I said, whoa. And I started reading it. I said, boy, the prayer of God came out all over me. And I ran in the kitchen and told my wife. <laughs> I ran in the kitchen. I didn't just ran. I said, honey. <laughs> oh, my God. I said, I, read, I started reading this letter, and the presence of God just come all over me. Praise God. Amen. And so I, I and, and, and it's right along the line that I wanted to, that I wanted to start teaching today, and that made and that made me feel more confident that I'm going in the right direction and, and sharing it with you guys today. Because see, y'all know me. This is not one of my subjects that I that I teach on. Amen. I don't normally mess with finances. But God wants me to because God wants to do something in your life. God wants to bring your finances to another level. Amen. This is how our finances came to the level that we are right now. Y'all think what y'all do help us get what we are? No. What y'all what y'all do help us keep the doors open. God helped us get where we are. Amen. What y'all do, y'all help us keep the doors open. Amen. And now, now look at now look at now look at this. But from this point on. <laughs> Glory to God. But from this point on. Your seed, your gift is going to cause grace to abound to your account. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Well, you know what? I'm a, I got everything I need, but you know what? I, you can just you can just talk, and I'll listen if it don't if it don't feel right. I don't. I'm, not, I'm gonna shut you out anyway. <laughs> no, don't out. shut me out. Give me <laughs> Don't shut me out, Damn Alan. Me. Don't shut me out. Don't shut me out, uh, Murphy and Dale. Damn Don't y'all shut me out, amen. Damn <laughs> Speak amen. Word. Because 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 I'm 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 gonna say something tonight that's gonna that's gonna re resonate with your spirit. Speak word. I'm gonna speak something tonight that's gonna resonate with your spirit. Then all of a sudden, you you might hear it with your ear, but your spirit is gonna hear it Ignite. by the spirit of God. And this is what's going to make all the difference in the world. Glory to God. Amen. This is what's going to make all the difference in the world. Because sometimes, sometimes we, get, we get caught up for a moment. But I believe that God, see, under the old covenant, God poured out his blessing upon his people. And multiplied all that all they had until they were some of the richest people in the world. Remember Abraham? Yeah. God made him a wealthy man. Job. And Job, yeah. God, God, I'm telling you, God can do something for you right now that no man will do for you. Glory to God. He will cause you to start thinking wealth. <laughs> Make, make you start thinking I, all of my needs are met. Even though you might have all these needs, all these things that's coming against you, and all of a sudden your thinking turn around. And you stop focusing on all your needs. You start focusing on the source of your supplier. And you start looking and say, Father, I, I know this is all, this is, this, is here. This, is, this is, I see this every day, and I'm dealing with this best I can, but I'm not going to focus on that right now. 
not, I'm not going to even focus on this tomorrow, nor even the next day. I'm going to focus on you because you are my source. You supply all of my need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And now, Father, I know that you're not a man that you should lie. You said, when I give, it shall be given unto me. What am I doing? I'm bringing God back into remembrance of his word. Amen. I'm bringing God into remembrance of his word. Because, see, God is expecting us to bring his word back to his ears. And when we do, we can expect God. Because when we know that God hears us, huh? when we know that he hears us, we know that we have the petition we have asked of him. It, been, it, it is granted. It is granted to us. Amen. It is granted to us. Glory to God. And so when I come down, when I come to this, when I, when I look at this, I look at all the possibilities that God has set before. The Apostle Paul faced uh, uh, his circumstances depending on God as his source. He didn't come depending on man. man. If I was depending on man, I would have shut these doors a long time ago. Amen. 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 Thank God I don't have to depend on man. Amen. 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 Glory. Glory to God. I'm like Paul. <laughs> Paul looked at God as his source. Amen. Amen. And so, and, I, and, I, and this is why I tell God. I told my wife, that I tell my wife all the time, as long as God pays the bill, I'll keep the doors open. But the moment he stopped paying the bill, that's the moment the door closed. Amen. It's on the table right there. Glory to God. Amen. So now we, we are in a, we're in, a, we're, in a, we're in a position right now, amen, to tap into, the, into God's unlimited, unmeasurable supply. Woo. Glory to God. That makes that make, that make me quiver on the inside. Because I remember when God said we were riding down the road, we was we were all we was broke as all get out. Yeah, that's a good word, huh? Broke as all yeah. get out. And, and, uh, and we was headed we was headed down out of town to to to, to work with the church. We were help establishing, amen. And 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 we didn't have no money for gas. Our car was about on empty. We had enough gas to get down there. Didn't have enough to get back. But we stayed on our course. We didn't look at our circumstances. We stayed on course. And as we were traveling, God spoke to me and said, Larry, you are a wealthy man. I said, I started laughing. I said, oh, God. Amen. And I said, honey, you know what God just said? Did you hear? And she said, no, I didn't hear it. How could she hear? He was talking to me. <laughs> but I asked her, did you hear it? She said, no, I didn't hear it. I said, and she said, what did he say? I said, God just said that I was a wealthy man. And you know, after God spoke that to me, I started going to college. I started going to school with my wife over at American River College. Right after God spoke that to me, and every day I was confessing that I'm a wealthy man. Okay. Everywhere I went, Alan, I was saying I'm a wealthy man. Yeah. I didn't have a dime in my pocket, <laughs> but I'm a wealthy man. <laughs> I'm a wealthy man. Glory to God. Amen. And before you know it, before you know it. Those words start to produce in our lives. Amen. God, we started, we started plant, we, we, we started giving into this into this ministry, world evangelism. And the next thing you know, the man of God spoke to me and said, God wanna make you rich. Then he said, ah! <laughs> You know how he do. <laughs> He said, God want to make you rich. Then he screamed. Ah! <laughs> and, and, and that was confirmation to me. Amen. And so when God would ask me to sow a certain amount of, uh, uh, into the ministry, not in my ministry, into someone else's ministry, you know what I did? I said, honey, God told me to, to, to give this. God want me to give this amount of money. And she knew what we had at the time. She said, well, if God said it, then do it. <laughs> she never told me not to do it. If God said do it, do it. And so I, I did it. And God, and I did it. And, and, and before I could get home good, before we could get our bags unpacked, I had, I had more money. I had 
scheduled to make more money than I have ever made. Okay. <laughs> Amen. God opened doors supernaturally for me to, to not, for me to make money. And then he gave me the help to make the money. In other words, he not only gave me provision, but he gave other people provision for helping me. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yeah. See, God wants to bring you to another level of increase in finances. But you got to be willing to release well, you talking about giving. Yeah, I am. But but you you don't understand. This is why you this is why you still this is why so many people are still struggling in the area of finance because and, and you say, well, I have a fixed finance. I can't do it. Well, who fixed your finances? God did. Hey, Amen. I had a fixed finance too. <laughs> <laughs> if I didn't fix what I'm doing, I'm like, what? <laughs> If I had to fix what I was doing, I wasn't gonna have no finances. And so I had to fix I had to fix I had to fix my 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 outlet. <laughs> Alright, man. I had to I had to bring I had to bring things back around again, I had to turn things around again. Amen. And how did I do that? By trusting in the Lord. By trusting in the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Sitting in uh I'm gonna take you to I'm gonna take you to another scripture right now because Y'all, 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 y'all hungry. I can see this. I can see this. God want, God want to speak to your hearts. And I'm going to open up the door for God to speak to us today. Amen. Let's look at, let's look at uh, the book of uh, Malachi. The book of Malachi. Right out, right before Matthew. Right before Matthew. Malachi. Amen. Glory to God. And I want to look here at chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. Hallelujah. See, God knows exactly where we are. And he knows exactly what needs to take place in our life to bring us to a position of more than enough. Amen. You see, there's a if if just say for instance that someone has a a drawn out plan that have that have already made millions and billions of dollars, and they show you that plan, would you want to take advantage of that plan? Huh? Would it be? Would it? Would it catch your attention? Would it catch your interest to make you want to at least have a look at it and see what would you need to do to apply the same principles to your life? Amen. Well, that's what God is showing us right now. It's just like Rockefeller. Amen. God has given us a plan on how to get wealth, on how to accumulate wealth. Amen. Glory to God. And this is not a plan of a man. This is the plan of God. This is the plan of God. In the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse, let's just start looking at verse number, verse number 8. Amen. Verse number 8. And it says, because see, the major, the major, the major method of God used today to pour out his blessings upon his people is through which way? Your giving, your tithe. And you offer him. Amen. Notice what he said, right? Verse number eight. He said, Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me, but you say, Wherein have we robbed thee? See, we robbed God. He said, Wherein have we robbed thee? He said, In tithes and offerings. In tithes and offerings. And then if you look at verse number nine. In verse number nine, I used to hate, I used to didn't like to see this, especially when I wasn't obeying God. I used, I didn't like to see this part right here. He said, What did it say? You are cursed. Now, how did I get cursed? How did I get cursed? Amen. Because I robbed him. That's exactly right. He said, you are cursed with the curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. 
Even this whole nation. You have robbed me. Even this whole nation. Then look at verse number 10. It says, bring ye what? All your tithe. Not a portion of it. How much is your tithe? A tenth of what? A tenth of your income. That's right. Yes. And your gross. The gross income. Amen. You're absolutely right. Because when this ministry give the tithe, we don't say we're going to give tithe, but we're going to take the we're going to take the, the church rent out of the tithe. No, we don't. No, we don't take that out. When we give the tithe from this ministry to that, to when we sow seeds out of this ministry to another ministry, we give above and beyond the tenth. We give above and beyond the tenth. Amen. Just like right now, it's time for us to give our tithes again out of this ministry. Amen. And we're going to give above and beyond the tenth. Amen. But notice what he says right here, because you see, you need to understand it, because see, what he's saying to us is very important. Verse number 10 says, But bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be what? Meat, Meat in my house. Meat in my house. Amen. And I like what it says out there. And prove me now. Here we have said the Lord of hosts. If I would not, what? Open you the windows of heaven. See, God wants to open for you the windows of heaven. But if you restrain from God, if you hold back from God, you are not hurting God. You're only hurting yourself. You're only hurting yourself when you, when you, when you restrain from giving God what belongs to him. you it's already belongs to God. God can take everything that you got in a minute and go on. All in, you know, next day you be you can be you can be homeless because you because you, 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 you the Bible says you're cursed because you have robbed me even this whole nation. But bring ye but bring ye all the time to the store that there may be meat in my house and prove me now. He will set the Lord of hosts. Oh my God. Prove me now, here will say the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you. He said, if I will not open you the windows of heaven. How many of you ready for the windows of heaven to open up over your life? I raised my hand and my feet too. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room Enough to receive it. Room enough to receive it. Amen. You see, when we understand, when we can see what God is saying to us, we can see, we can see one that's we can see why one of the major methods of God blessing his people is getting the people to, to walk in obedience in this area. Amen. Because this is an area where most people have problems. Right. This is the area where most people have problems. Thank God that. When uh, see, I was tired before I met my wife, and my wife was tired before we, before I met her. Amen. Matter of fact, when she when she was a uh, uh, lonely and didn't have nobody in her life, she sowed a seed. <laughs> she said, "I wasn't lonely." <laughs> she had cats. You're right. She had some kitty cats. <laughs> And then all, then all of a sudden, God brought me into her life. She said, oh, man. <laughs> Amen. Her life changed. Oh, man. <laughs> her life changed. Glory to God. She's so happy now. Sometimes she's, she get a little fussy, but she's still, overall, she's still happy. And look at that smile on her face. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. But notice, but notice, almost every Christian at some point in life has experienced the attack of the enemy in their finances. Yeah. Now, how many you you have experienced attacks on your finances? Yeah, we have, we have. And you know why we have experienced attacks on our finances because we don't understand the value of our finances in the hands of God. You see, it's it's, it's in our hands it means a lot to us, but in God's hands, oh my God. You talk about an immeasurable source of supply. Amen. You talk about abundance of supply. Amen. 
when it's in God's hand, when you when you put it in God's hand, God is going to God. You know when I remember I didn't have a job, didn't have any money, and I didn't. And and the man said, you don't have to have your money right now. Just make a vow to God. Just make a vow, pledge that you will give a thousand dollars into my ministry. The man said. If, if you might, you don't might not even have any money right now, but just make a vow, and I guarantee you, God will cause you to have that money to sow. You know what? I didn't have a job. I was believing God for a job, and 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 so and so on. And uh, and back in the country, there wasn't a whole lot of jobs going around. But when I sold that seed, there was a paper mill down in Cortland, Alabama. All of a sudden, they start hiring pipe fitters and pipe fitter helpers. I said, oh, thank you, Jesus. I went to apply for the job. You know what? I got that job. Why did, how did I get that job? Because I made a vow to God. God saw that I would get the seed to give that, make that vow good. God made me. God, God made that, 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 that job come about. He caused it to come about because I sowed that seed. Because I made that vow to sow that seed. And when I made that vow to sow that seed, amen, God came through. He came through, amen. And, and I went and passed the physical and all that stuff and got that job. And then I went to work every day shouting. And, and at lunchtime, I had Bible study every day on my lunch break. Because I was up. I was up. I would just, I would just get him to understand this walk that I've been called to walk. Amen. And and I and I started and I and I sat down there reading 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 the Bible. And all of a sudden people saw what I was doing. They all started coming around, asking me questions. Mm -hmm. I had I started having Bible study on lunch break. Amen. Amen. God always he always showed me how to come out of a situation. The key to reaping God's blessing upon your finances is in developing your relationship with him. You see, your finances is direct linked to God. And when your relationship is in the right perspective, God is able to see you become what did, what did, what they call that that that, that 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 pipe that they put that electrical cords through? Conduit. conduit. You become a what? Conduit. A conduit. Mm -hmm. Amen. In other words, you become a receiver and you become what? A giver. Yeah. See, because when that wire comes in, it gotta go somewhere. It's got to connect to something. And that's what God wants to do with you. That's what God wants to do with you. God wants to pour into you, and he wants you to connect to who he, to, to his, to his, to whoever, to who he tell you to. Because not every place that you plant your seed, not every ground is good ground. I found that out too. Oh my God, I found that out. I took all I had and I sold it to a church that God had told me to come away from, and, and 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 I said, what well, did he mean for us not to give in that church too? Then I asked my wife. She said, I don't know. You let's just do it and find out. Oh, <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> we gave into that ministry, and and after God put call us come out, call us out of that church. We gave into that ministry, and all hell broke loose in our finances. See, the, it might have been good ground for someone else. But it wasn't good ground for us because God had told us to separate ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that meant for our finances too. And I said, and I and I've been and, and when I found when I, when we started having fi uh, trouble in our finances, I started complaining to God. I said, God, you told me to give. And God said, This is when God started dealing with me about sowing into my own ministry. He said, Open up an account for your own ministry. Because see, this is right when we were just getting ready to start our ministry. We didn't know which way to go. And so and we were trying to, we were just testing the waters. And he said, open an account for your own ministry. 
And, and I said, okay. And I went to open up an account. Amen. We got our, our nonprofit situation all set squared away. Then we opened up a nonprofit account. Amen. And then, and then uh, he said, now, the next day he said, I want you to sow $1,000. And I said, sow $1,000? I said, God, I never sold that kind of money in my ministry. I always sold it in somebody else's ministry so I could reap the harvest. He said, if you don't think your ground is rich, then how can you expect anyone else to plant seed? And and I said, God, that's a, you know, me and God, we we be carrying on these little dialogues. We be having these conversations, and I, and I be, and I began to, I said, okay, God, I understand, I understand. And I told my wife again, I said, honey, God wants to sow a thousand dollars into our ministry. And she said, Are you sure it's our ministry? Because see, she know we don't always give it out to someone else too. She said, Are you sure? I said, That's what he said. She said, Okay. So we did. We sold it in, into our ministry. Next thing you know. Next thing you know, God had blessed us with more money than we was able. That, that's when we started dealing with Marcellino ministry. That's when we started dealing with Marcellino ministry, and God showed us the seed that we were sowing was it's because we walked in obedience in that area. That God, this is why God started to bless us, Amen. And I, and when, while we was on college, I was going to the school. I was taking up. I was taking uh, what kind of psychology I was taking? Biological. Biological psychology. I was thinking, of, I was trying to figure out how your brain worked. <laughs> <laughs> the front lobe and the back lobe and the continent, you know. I'm checking out all that stuff. Amen. <laughs> well, marriage. And, and then marriage counseling, marriage, marriage therapy, marriage counseling therapy also. We did all that stuff. We, we took all that stuff. And guess, I was making good grades. My wife, she said, I am so proud of you. I said, I'm proud of me too. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. But God, but God began to show us and, and all while we were taking college, we were going to school, every day I was every day I said, I'm a wealthy man. I'm a wealthy man. I'm I'm walking around on campus, you know, I'm a wealthy man. Okay. God began to show up in my finances. God began to bless me. I mean God began to God took us to another level financially. And I'm telling you, God wants to do the same thing for you. Amen. God wants to bring you to another level in your finances. See, God is no respected person. And let me tell you something. See the color of my skin? It has nothing to do with it. You're, see, I'm black and you white, but you know what? God don't look at that. God looks at what? Our hearts. God looks at our hearts. Amen. And when we honor God from our heart, God in return honors us. Oh, glory to God. Amen. So when you, so when you did, see, God is faithful. God is faithful to his word. Amen. God is faithful to his word. And when I look at that, and when I we're still in Malachi right now. We're still in Malachi. Let's look at let's look here again. Because you see. You, you need to understand this. Let's, let's look at this again. Let's look at verse number six. Let's back it up. Look at verse number six. He says, I am the Lord, and I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob is consumed. Even from the days of your even from the days of, of your of your fathers, ye have gone away from my ordinances. See, people, they walk with God, but then they turn away from the ordinances of God. They turn away from the way of God. Amen. They go away from God's ordinances. Amen. And have uh, kept not them. Return to me. This is what God is saying. Return to me, and I will return unto you, said the Lord of hosts. But you say, where shall we, we return? And he said, will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, where have we robbed thee? In tithes and offering. See, the tithes and offering is very important to God. They are very important to God. If we can't, if we, if we say we love God, we say we want to be pleasing to God, then we got to be pleasing to God in the area of our finances too. Amen? Because you see, because he says in the next verse, he said, but you are cursed with a curse because you have what? Robbed, robbed me. Because you have robbed me. Amen? Now God is, now, and, then you, and then you try to figure out why your finances is not uh, lasting. Why your finances is not bringing you to the next 
uh, holding you up until you, you make it through your next paycheck? How come you don't have a savings account? Amen. Because you are robbing God. It's going into one pocket and going into a pocket with a jack got holes in it, going right out the bottom. That's a scripture for that too. Huh? <laughs> Amen. Amen. So it said, so it said right here, look at verse number 11. It said, I will rebuke the devourer. Now, notice, this is what God's going to do for those that are tithing. This is what God's going to do for those that are tithing. Notice what he said right here. He said, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. And he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, said the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you what? Blessed. Who is he talking to? He's talking to those that are walking obedient in, in this area. He's not talking to those that are stingy, those that are stealing, those that are holding back when they should, when they should be uh, being a blessing. He's talking to those that are to, to those that are willing to walk in obedience. He said, verse number 12 again said, And all the na and all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land unto me, said the Lord. You shall be a license land, said the Lord of hosts. Your words have been, he said, your words have been what? Stout against me, said the Lord. Yet ye say, what have we spoken so, uh, so much against thee? Ye have said, it is vain to serve God. And what profit is it that what profit is it that we have kept his ordinances and have and, and, and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts? And now we call the proud happy. What is it? We call the proud happy. Yea, they that walk wickedly are set up. In other words, we look more at those people that are prospering. Even though, you know, that's a lot of people, there's a lot of people prospering in the land. Mm -hmm. But the Bible said, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. And so now, God wants to bring you in, He wants to get your heart right in the area of in, in finance because. God wants to bless you, and when God begins to bless you, it's going to the wealth of the wicked is going to be poured into your hand, and God got to God got to be able to trust you that you're going to become a conduit. Yeah, there's going to be a lot you're going to be able to keep, but there's a lot you're going to have to give away. Amen. Amen. You got to be willing to give when God say give, because you see, you're going to have more than enough. It's not that going to be enough for you and your four and no more. It's going to be enough for, for you, your four, and four more. <laughs> but you got to be willing. You got to be willing to let it flow through you. Because you're going to be able to keep a whole lot more than you letting go. Amen. You can be able to, you can be able to keep a whole lot more than you let go. But the thing about it, God wants it, you, you're coming into a season that God wants to bless you. Why? Because we're coming into the last days and the wealth of the wicked is about to be overthrown and, and poured out into the church and to those that are walking up right before God and to those that are, because you know what he said in Deuteronomy chapter 18, chapter 8, verse number 18. Amen. He said, I give you the power to what? To get wealth. So what? So that my covenant may be established. Even until this day. See, God expect us to give. How many of you know your body, when your body is, healed, is aching, you want healing in your body? When your finances is hurting, God wants to heal your finances too. He wants to heal your finances too. Amen. Amen. So we have, we have, to, we have to allow God we have to allow God the opportunity to work with us even in the area of our monies. Amen? Even in the area of our monies. Glory to God. I haven't talked on something like this and I don't know when. But you know what? I, I feel it. I feel it. 
Amen. See, God going to command the blessings upon you. God going to command blessings on you once you start when you start obeying Him. When you start doing the right thing, God going God going to command the blessings upon you. God wants to bring you into a new dimension of His supernatural provision. If you are His child, then He wants to fulfill His blessing of flow. He wants to fill the blessings in your life that He has promised you. You are his child, right? Amen. Then he wants to fulfill his word in your life. He wants you to know how much he loves you and how much he cares for you. But you know what? He can't do that if we're not going to do our part. I know when my wife start, when my wife and I started giving, my, my God, you know how much we, we, you know how much money we gave away last year? My, she don't want me to tell you. But I'm going to tell you. I'm going I'm to tell you. Don't tell her that I told you. Don't tell her that I told you. Amen. Last year, we gave over 20 grand. Over $20,000. We gave away. That's just me and her. That's not talking about the ministry. Y'all understand what I'm saying? In order to do that, you've got to have something coming in. Am I right? Because you can't do that if you don't have nothing coming in. That's why we are sores. Ever since the world been, there's always been what? Seed time, Seed time and harvest. Seed time and harvest. Sowing and reaping. Those seasons come around every year, folks. They're still here. Amen. And the devil started messing with us about our car. We bought two brand new cars in a row. Two years in a row. You don't find people buying new cars like that year after year. But they was lemons. Amen. And the, and the second one we bought, we said, no, you got us one time. You're not going to take us on this. We want our money back on this car. We made them give us back all our money we spent on that car. That second car. And I said, honey, we started looking for another car. We started looking for a Lincoln Continental. I want to get back into the Lincoln because they, they never give us problems. Okay. Amen. And, and, and when I test drive the Lincoln, I, it was, it cramped me. It's so small on the inside. These new Lincoln, they, not, they don't have no room in them. They don't have no room. They, 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 they small. Amen. And now, and so I said, honey, I don't want no, let's look at the Navigator. And I started looking at the Navigator, and that was too big. And I said, honey, let's go look at the Mercedes. <laughs> She's like, what? <laughs> I said, let's go look at the Mercedes. Okay. And so she said, okay. <laughs> you know, I, my, my wife, she's, she's very, you know, when it's, it's something that she liked. She said, okay. And so we went looking at the Mercedes. And the, the dealer tried to get us to buy this old rackety car. One that's beat down had all these miles on it. And, uh, and I even test drive it. And then I test drive a good one. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. And, and then I test drive a, old, a, a, a messed up one. Then I test drive a medium. Then I test drive a good one. And I tell you what. You <laughs> felt the difference. I, 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 not only did I feel the difference. I, oh my God. It's, it's so much difference in the ride. Amen. And so, uh, the needless to say, we didn't take the old one. <laughs> we didn't accept the old one. It wasn't. It wasn't for us. Amen. Even though it would have, it would have been a lot cheaper. But we wanted God best. Amen. Because our God supply what all our need according to His riches in glory. By Christ, you make you want to kick your leg up. Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. So now, as I'm looking at this, as, I, as, I, as, I'm, as I'm bringing this out to you guys, and I know that my hour is about up right now. Amen. It's, it's just about gone. But God will have a people. Amen. God will have a people that will honor him in these last days. Because, see, there is a flow of finances about to come into the church. And this is why God wants us to prepare ourselves Amen. Remember, we're going to have a visitation. 
But God will raise us in our finances too. Amen. Not only in our walk with Him, Amen, but in the area of our finances too. So He want to bring us. He want to bring correction in that area in our life also. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So y'all got that right? Amen. Amen. And I, and I know y'all ain't jumping up and shouting like y'all always do, but that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. Glory to God. Now, now, uh, let's look at. Can, can we look at another scripture now? Mm -hmm. Did I finish here? Yeah, I did. Then. Okay, I, and I and I, I'm gonna give you one more scripture. Let's go to the Deuteronomy the one I just quoted to you a minute ago. Deuteronomy eight. 18. Because you need to see that in the word. Oh my God. You know, Deuteronomy chapter 8, it has a lot to do when you're dealing with finances. It has a lot to do with not only verse 18, but you look at verse number 3 through 10. Then verse 13, 14, and verse number 18. All these chapter, verses. Chapter 8. Yeah, chapter 8. All, these, all this stuff deals with this area. Amen. But I just want you to look at verse number 18 right now because then we're going to we're gonna close it out with this one. And next time, we'll have more to talk about. Amen. As the Lord will. But right now, we're going we're gonna to just look at verse number 18. And I'm going to going to close it out because see whatever financial problem or circumstance you face this is the time for God to give you a financial breakthrough to bring you out of your worry and doubt debt amen worry how many have debt how many of you, you when you get into debt you go worry amen you get not you not only do you worry it, it it begin to frustrate you and all of a sudden you begin to have these heart murmurs <laughs> You were going to think that, wow, God, what's going on, you know? Amen. But uh, you, but God wants to uh, prepare you for these areas because, see, one of the major reasons of many Christians still live in financial bondage, amen, is, is because they took to their own limited abilities instead of yielding to the unlimited abilities of God. Amen. They began to look at what they can accomplish, their own supply, what they can accomplish in themselves instead of looking at they, they live from paycheck to paycheck and not allowing God. I mean, I have, I understand because I was like that too. I haven't lived that way in a long time. I used to live from paycheck to paycheck. I don't live that way no more. Amen. I can go buy whatever I want right now. Amen. Because I learned how to put God's finances to work. Now, verse number 18 says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get well. You see, this is why this is, this is why we got to be careful in this area, because you see, we want to do what we think is right for our finances. And before you know it, you're going to start running low in your finances. And, and if you don't watch out, you might even run out. Mm -hmm. Then you'd be, what am I going to do now? Yeah. Oh, God, I'm, I, need to make, I need to get some money. I, I feel, now you want to go to the bar and you want to go borrow some money. What you going, why are you going to do that? You're going to get yourself into debt now because you, 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 because you wasn't a good steward. Now you've gotten yourself into debt. And now you become, uh, uh, you become slave to the lender. This is not God's will for us. Amen. He don't want us to become slaves to the lenders. Amen. So go, so it goes on to say in verse number 18, for it is he that giveth us power to get wealth. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth us the power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he swore to our fathers, as it is this day. Amen. God's covenant promises rest upon our obedience in the area of finances. In the area of our finances. You see, I have, I'm a businessman, and I still have to give tithes. Amen? 
I still give, I still give a tenth of my earnings and above. Amen. Sometimes my tithes, I ain't gonna say that. <laughs> I ain't gonna say that. But I'm gonna say this: that God will watch over His word concerning your finances when you start obeying him in the area of finances. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Father, I have declared that what you have given me for today. And Lord, I ask you in the name of Jesus that you would allow this word to penetrate the hearts of your people those that are with us by the internet and those that are with us in the service. God, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus because you showed me that you want to bring us to another level in our finances. And in order for that to come about, I got to teach it. I have to teach on that. I have to bring their expectation to a new level. And God, I know it's not a popular subject, but in order for them to receive what you want to bring into their lives, the word must first go forth. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And as faith, and as the word of God go forth, faith is being produced in their hearts, so that they can, so they can have the confidence in your word that you will do what you said. So, Father, in obedience to you. I have preached your holy word to your people. Not trying to manipulate them in any kind of way. Not trying to seduce them in any kind of way to give, Father. Because if you can't get them to give, who am I to try to make them give? I just give your word, God, and, and you you, you touch their hearts. Those that with us by the internet, they with us daily or every service, they with us on the internet, Father. But, and I'm asking you to touch their hearts too to cause them to begin to sow into the ministry so that they can begin to expect an overflow into their lives and in their finances, in their savings accounts. Father, I'm asking this in the name of Jesus. And God, I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's go ahead and prepare for our offering now. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let me have one of those envelopes too, please, sir. Bible said, given it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. But what measure you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Amen. God loveth a cheerful giver, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always have an all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. All good works. Amen. Amen. And Father, as we give tonight, God, I'm expecting you to confirm your word tonight. Confirm this word that have been spoken into our ears and in our hearts. Into our hearts. Confirm this word, Lord. I'm asking you, Father, to bless your people. Show them that you mean what you say. 
and that you say what you mean. Now, Father, I bless this people. Oh, yeah. I release the blessing upon them. I cancel every satanic attack against their finances, against their minds, their wills, their emotions. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke it off of them right now in Jesus' name. Father, I release the spirit of prosperity to rest upon them in the area of their finances because they are givers it shall be given unto them. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give them to their bosom. Mm -hmm. Father, I thank you for it right now in Jesus' name. Now, Father, have your way in our lives and in our finances. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Go ahead. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. If you've never been born again, you've never been saved, you may, maybe you have, but you've been you backslid, you want, and you want to get your life back on the right track with God. Amen. If I'm talking to you, then say this prayer with me. Amen. Or if you just want to say it with me, it's, and, and you say, well, Pastor, I, I believe I'm right with God, but you know what, Pastor? Because I love God, I'm going to say it again. <laughs> Amen. Say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin. Forgive me, Lord. Come into my heart. Create in me a right spirit. And renew in me a clean heart. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. And that you died for my sin. Today, as I confess my sin, I believe, according to your word, that my sins are forgiven. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you. Amen. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you that you would touch every heart that said that prayer with me. Touch their hearts, Father. Bring them to a place of inner peace. I thank you for it now. And I give you praise and I give you glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Anyone need prayer tonight? Let me pray for you. Anyone want prayer tonight? I'll pray for you right now. Amen. Amen. I even anoint you with oil tonight. Amen. Expect this week that the, your mind is going to begin to settle down and that the peace of God that's a passive all understanding is going to begin to rest upon you starting even tonight. Okay? And don't look at the circumstances. Look to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that you ask or think and just trust him. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I anoint my sister and I cancel every assignment against her mind, her will, and her emotions. Father, you are God and there's none like you. And I rebuke every demonic force that would interfere with her mind. God, I assign angels right now over my dear sister to help her to aid her in her request to see her mom. And Father, I thank you for it now. In the name of Jesus, I release the angels to go to work right now on her account in Jesus' name. Oh my God, yeah. Yes, Lord. I release the power. There it is. I speak peace to the troubled mind in Jesus' name. Thank you for it, Father. Thank you, Lord. 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 Anybody else? Everybody all right? Let's pray for anybody in the internet here.
Amen. Father, we pray for those that are with us by the internet right now. We ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that your hand be extended toward them, that you would supernaturally pull out your spirit upon them and upon everyone that is walking obedient in the area of their finances. And Father, yes, for those of you that wanted to sow by the internet, I forgot to give you my address. It's www.larrybergenministries.com. Amen. Go there, sow your seed, and expect God to supernaturally move on your behalf. Now, Father, I thank you, and I bless your people, and I consider it as done in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Join us again on Tuesday night as we bring you the Holy Word of God. God bless you until then. Bye-bye.